The COVID-19 pandemic has led to chaos around the world, making face masks and hand sanitizer part of everyday life, and even sparking the emergence of ultraviolet sterilizing devices. One such item is this pocket-sized ultraviolet mask sterilizing case. It works using three ultraviolet UVC LEDs, Reflected by the case's aluminum foil lining, the light they emit is enough to render masks and other items 99.9% .9 sterile in just three minutes. The product was developed by a team from this Japanese aluminum specialist. It's part of a cross-departmental project to move beyond existing approaches and develop products demanded by the changing times. The idea came while trying to devise useful items for the pandemic. They realized their firm's highly reflective aluminum was ideal for mask sterilizing cases. The development budget for a trial run was raised through crowdfunding, an idea that came from younger members of staff. The crowdfunding idea came from younger staff outside the project team. They took an interest in the project and recommended different sales approaches and marketing tools we could use. All sorts of concrete advice. It's been great to see our network expanding beyond the core project team. Founded 90 years ago, this firm specializes in aluminum products, including aluminum sheets used for food, medicine packaging, and electrical components. They're also a market leader in aluminum paste, a key ingredient of paint encoding in the automobile industry. However, faced with stiff price competition from China and elsewhere, Japanese manufacturers have been forced to explore new approaches This historic Japanese firm is reimagining the future of manufacturing and leveraging existing skills to explore entirely new business areas. Year after year, Typhoons and other destructive weather events continue to grow in frequency and severity around the world. The key underlying factor is thought to be man-made climate change. In response, the pressure is building for a combined global effort to promote the use of CO2 emission-free renewable energy sources. One such source is solar power. Toyo Aluminium built upon its long history of making generator components to create a new solar panel design, the Hane module. Around half the weight of earlier designs, it's ideal for installment on warehouses, parking areas, and other facilities with weight limitations. At the heart of each solar panel are semiconductors known as silicon photocells. These cells are protected from impact and water damage by a reinforced glass cover and an aluminum backsheet. With three decades of experience producing these backsheets, Toyo Aluminium held a 50% plus market share as of 2010. However, they were becoming aware of an issue restricting the boom in solar power. We got feedback from customers who wanted to install panels on rooftops, but in many cases had to give up due to weight concerns. We saw these findings as a new business opportunity, and we began to develop a lighter solar panel design. In 2016, 
At industry exhibitions in Shanghai and San Francisco, they showcased a lightweight prototype solar panel design. These were the first lightweight panels of their kind. Attendees were fascinated. They picked them up to test the weight. That proved their potential and confirmed that this could be a viable business. Inspired by such feedback, the firm's engineers redoubled their efforts to finalize their lightweight solar panel design. This is a typical glass cover, 3.2 millimeters thick, and a back sheet. Of course, the thicker the glass, the heavier it is. So we're trying to cut weight by getting the thickness down below one millimeter. But that brings a trade-off with strength. So we're trying to keep things tough by using a backboard material we developed in-house. They also turned their attention to backboard adhesives, leveraging their vast experience of backsheet production to develop a unique adhesive that can hold in place for over 20 years. Through snow or strong winds, we had to ensure the glass and the cells could remain intact. Glass strength is tested by applying 1,000 kilogram weights and so on. And we did all that by hand. We really went the extra mile when it came to recreating various conditions. In 2018, they completed their lightweight solar panel design. And besides being light, it's also 50% stronger than conventional solar panels, able to withstand up to 80 centimeters of snow and wind speeds of up to 60 meters per second. More and more companies are aiming to make a social contribution by switching to renewable energy. One user of the Hane module is this major imaging and electronics manufacturer. In April 2017, we became the first Japanese company to join RE100, a global initiative bringing together the world's most influential businesses driving the transition to using 100% renewable electricity. This site leads Rico Group's environmental business initiatives. To achieve the RE100 goals by 2050, we had to move quickly and proactively ahead of our other facilities. The awnings above these parking spaces are supported by pillars along one side. The resulting weight limits and the need to withstand over 50 centimeters of snowfall made the Hane module the ideal choice. In April 2019, this optimal use of space for renewable energy received RE100 certification. And with the Hane module being installed at sites across Japan, there are high hopes for its potential contribution to society-wide decarbonization. More than just a product like any other, our current aim is to boost sales by providing extremely high-quality items that leverage our company's strengths. For products to be accepted around the world, the UN Sustainable Development Goals, otherwise known as the SDGs, are growing in importance. A particular focus of moving forward will be to continue to develop environmentally conscious products. With no access to electricity or gas, around a third of the world's population still relies on firewood. This demand also drives deforestation, which in turn contributes to climate change. One potential solution comes in the form of devices like these fuel-free solar cookers. Aluminum panels reflect and focus the sun's rays, generating enough energy with which to cook. 
placed within, a pot of rice, like this one, can be ready in around 90 minutes. One of the developers was Professor Nakajo Yuichi of Ashikaga University. The process began in 1991 when he and a group of students developed the solar cookers as a teaching tool for children. In 2013, he was asked by the planner of the project to explore the device's potential in Ethiopia. To withstand prolonged usage in the country's harsh environment, Nakajo hoped to replace the original cardboard construction with more durable plastic. However, Reflective foils weren't designed to adhere to plastic, and we lacked the skills to affix it ourselves, so we needed someone to step in and help. Nakajo reached out to Sekiguchi Tomonobu, developer of Toyo Aluminium's patented non-stick yogurt foil. These solar cookers were originally a teaching aid to give the children the memorable experience of cooking rice or heating water using the sun's energy. We wanted to promote that, to provide our support in promoting this amazing product to as many people as possible. Sekiguchi set about designing a more robust solar cooker design and for ease of assembly, he also added press studs. Nakajo took the new design to Ethiopia, where he provided it to refugee camps with great success. Besides being an effective way to cook, economizing on fuel meant residents could use more of their limited financial resources on essentials like food and medicine. In urban areas as well, the ability to cook without fuel brought a positive response that indicated demand for solar cookers. Only one barrier remained to wider promotion, the cost. We conducted a survey into how much people would be willing to pay for one. The answers came to around 25 US dollars. Sekiguchi Tomonobu was tasked with developing a solar cooker design that was both practical and affordable. After six years of development, the end result was this Toyo solar cooker prototype. One sticking point was the right adhesive to bind aluminum sheets to the plastic frame. They developed a new adhesive with improved heat resistance and the power to hold fast through years of use. The portable folding design brings added convenience that should help promote its use. To Professor Nakajo, the next step is to effectively convey the merits of these solar cookers. You just put your ingredients in a pot and wait, just like any form of cooking. Our next task is to convey the unique benefits a solar cooker can bring. But once people have heard about them and what they can do, I think they'll understand. From 2022, the new solar cookers are set to go on sale in Japan for use in disaster preparedness kits. Once mass production is underway, it's hoped they'll be brought to the global market for the affordable sum of around 30 US dollars. I think these solar cookers will be very useful in case of emergencies. It's crucial to build awareness and understanding among as many people as possible. So we want to offer them as a disaster preparedness tool that anyone can use. Sakai Nyosei, who lost his right arm in an accident, 
is participating in user tests of a prosthetic arm. A myoelectric prosthetic like this one harnesses tiny electrical impulses generated by muscle contractions in the residual limb in order to control the movement of the prosthetic fingers. Compared to popular German-made items, this made-in-Japan myoelectric arm offers major savings in cost and weight. The secret lies in a lightweight battery pack that amplifies myoelectric currents to drive the prosthetic limb, offering ease of use in a range of complex movements. To amputees like Sakai, the groundbreaking design brings significant benefits to quality of life. I think the main difference is the weight. It places much less strain on your body than my previous items. And you can move the thumb and flatten the palm for more natural motions that don't leave you nursing a stiff shoulder. This new design was developed at the Hyogo Institute of Assistive Technology. The project was led by the Institute's director, Dr. Chin Takaaki. Current German-made prosthetic limbs offer users a very powerful and secure grip. But it's not a natural grip. The fingers can't move independently, so the motions don't look natural. Take opening a bottle, for example. Most of us do it like this. With the German hands, you can only do this. You can't adapt your grip to the shape of an item. If we could do that, we thought it would appeal to users in Japan. With this goal in mind, Jin enlisted a diverse team of specialists and manufacturers. The team included Professor Irie Mitsuru of Osaka Sangyo University, an expert on the control mechanisms of assistive robots. With this project, besides being able to grip things, we wanted to bring a Japanese attention to motion, to introduce new kinds of movement. Here is the internal mechanism, which stands in for the bones of a human hand. These two fingers do most of the work when gripping an object, while these two add stability. Grip, then stabilize. We combine that into one continuous motion. Achieving such complex finger movements requires appropriate power delivery and distribution. Ultimately, how to deliver electrical power was the principal issue. We had to develop an entirely new kind of battery. To develop this unique battery, Professor Idia enlisted the help of Toyo Aluminium. I'd spent years developing capacitor electrodes, including the development of a unique material we call Toyal Carbo. It offers extremely low resistance that I thought was ideal for the development of this new battery. To create a lightweight battery, they teamed up with another firm specializing in battery design. The finished product took some three years to develop, leveraging Toyo Aluminium's expertise in the selection of high-power battery materials. The outcome was a rechargeable lithium-ion battery that weighs only 6 grams but delivers a full 3.7 volts. Thanks to this new prosthetic, I can do the things I did before my amputation. And in fact, it's made my life even happier than it was back then. It means so much to me. It's transformed my life as an amputee. Around the world, the issue of ocean plastics is growing in urgency. In response, 
One global trend has been the phasing out of plastic utensils in favor of paper ones. Toyo Aluminium is also the developer of microwave-safe paper packaging for frozen meals. These containers have separate compartments for the main dish and side dishes, which increases the options for frozen meals. Iwai Hideaki represents one of the food brands making use of the containers. For frozen foods, as well as being microwave safe, the packaging has to meet a range of stringent criteria. Until now, there'd never been a paper container that was able to offer individual compartments for separate dishes. Conventional paper containers are typically pressed into shape, which limits the scope for complex shapes. December 2006 saw Toyo Aluminium begin the development of an alternative after Sato K proposed the idea of molding paper pulp over metal templates. At the time, I knew absolutely nothing about pulp molding. I got in touch with the Japan Pulp Mold Industry Association and asked them about equipment makers. They recommended Taisei, and I contacted them right away. Sato reached out to the recommended pulp molding specialist. Pulp molding involves the pressing of recycled paper pulp over metal molds. This is done before the fibers are dried to produce a variety of complex shapes. This approach is frequently used to create molded packaging for breakables, including electrical appliances. Sato's inquiry was answered by Taisei CEO Kato Shunsuke. When we first met, I remember the look in his eyes. He was so eager to get a trial machine design and start building prototypes. I'd never had a customer like that before, so I said, let's see what we can do. Armed with a specially commissioned press from Taisei, in the constant advice of Kato, Sato set about painstaking trials. He also developed a special laminator to apply a water-resistant film to the pulp-molded containers. The device uses a vacuum to draw heat-softened film smoothly over the inner surface of the paper vessels. The resulting container eventually went to market as specialized packaging for Groton. However, they identified an issue with the unlaminated paper exterior. Once one side is coated with film, you can't draw air through to laminate the opposite side. And because the exterior was untreated paper, it would shed large quantities of paper fibers, like this. Food packaging that gave off such dust could lead to customer complaints. In search of a solution, Sato conducted further tests and eventually arrived at the idea of coating both sides of the container in resin. Based on this concept, they produced a modified pulp molding machine and put the containers into production. Thanks to pulp molding, they achieved the mass production of compartmentalized containers for frozen meals. Present production stands at 1 million containers a month. And now, a decade after development was completed, there are plans for the construction of a new facility capable of turning out 10 million containers a month. These containers enable even heating in a microwave. And having their dishes warmed right through has brought positive feedback from our consumers. 
And as more people learn about their environmental benefits, I hope we can continue to make an environmental contribution alongside our customers. In April 2021, Toyo Aluminium began a comprehensive organizational transformation named the MX Project. In addition to overhauling leadership structure, its aim was to remove departmental barriers to better facilitate the proactive exploration of new business fields. The project's slogan is, Creating the Future, You, Me, Everybody Together. Activities in all sorts of entirely new fields are already underway. These include the development of sensors for infrastructure maintenance. The idea was prompted by concerns voiced by road construction professionals. Once the roadbed has been compacted during road surface repairs, workers need to assess its water content. Small sections are redug, and the resulting samples are weighed. They're then heated in a pan to vaporize any moisture within and reweighed to calculate the proportional water content. This process can take up to 20 minutes per sample. It's necessary to measure moisture content at quite a few points during road construction. Therefore, in some cases, there are delays that cause inconvenience to the general public. Construction workers have been calling for an easier way to measure moisture content. Solving this issue took the team into uncharted territory. They teamed up with external experts and partners to develop a sensor that can measure roadbed water content in just 30 seconds. A commercial launch is being targeted by the end of 2021. One great thing about the MX project is the chance to work together on the creation of new products. You get to collaborate with all sorts of people and partner companies. And ultimately, that helps to address all sorts of social issues. As we go forward, that will continue to be the aim of this project. Even for a firm with 90 years of technical development and business growth as an aluminum maker in a highly commoditized market, sticking to what you know is no longer enough to guarantee survival. There is also a social duty to future generations and the fulfillment of the SDGs. Moving forward, with the aim of addressing a range of social issues, the company hopes to continue its transformation to explore as many new fields as possible. This program was made possible by Toyo Aluminium.